You're watching Global Trade This Week with Pete Mento and Doug Draper. Welcome to yet another stunning, though confusing from the background, episode of Global Trade This Week. Um, we have both of us here together, which is wonderful. Um, so I'm sure I'm going to take some crap for giving Doug so much crap about drones while he was gone. Mm. Uh, but I'm coming to you live from Virginia. I am. Um, I was in D.C. yesterday for the um, I saw uh, I. I International Overseas Stability Association uh, Awards, which were wonderful. Uh, I always feel a little uncomfortable in a room full of State Department, CIA, and Special Forces people because I don't belong with any of them. So uh, it was it was a lot of fun for me. But it's great to have you back, Doug. It's nice to have the the uh, dynamic duo back together. Yeah, uh, you know, Keenan's Keenan's a lot like um, when you're baking using Splenda. It's okay. <laughs> but I, I think we can all tell that there's a huge difference in, oh, in what we get. I love get. that. That is great. Mm -hmm. Did you just come up with that top of your head? Of course I did. Doug, come yeah. on. I, how many times I have to tell you? I'm the funny one. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. need to leave that to me. Splenda. Uh, yeah. 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 So I'm, yeah, at my, I'm at my lawyer's house right now in beautiful uh, Warrenton, Virginia. Nice. And, and I am in an eight by eight cubicle uh, soundproof booth in uh, Park Hill, uh, neighborhood of Park Hill in Denver, Colorado. So it's, it's good to be back. And yeah, kudos to Keenan for uh, for back-to-back -back weeks not being yeah. uh, not being around. So he does Speaking of job. soundproof, real quick, Doug, do, do you remember the newlywed game? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And do you remember how they would isolate them in a soundproof booth when they were interviewing? Uh, I, I remember that. Well, I, I don't know if it was real or not. You know, they could have just been behind backstage. But yes, I remember the uh, the the, um, the show. Yeah, uh, Tom Selleck was on that show. Arnold Schwarzenegger was on that show. They had a lot of 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 interesting people that went on. I'm thinking of the newlywed game. No, um, the uh, not that we got. I'm thinking of um, the match, the, the the dating one there with the bachelorettes. Uh, uh, yeah, what the dating is that? game. Yeah, the dating game. Yeah. Dating game. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Lillywood game, it was people trying to answer questions about their spouses. And I I wonder how well we would do, Doug. Horrible. And there's mm -hmm. one, and I can't say it. I mean, we, we get a little sloppy here with uh, – uh, we get a lot of latitude on, on our topics. But there's one uh, episode that uh, has become pretty popular that I'm not going to oh, go yeah. down. But every time I hear the, uh, the newlywed game, I think of that answer. The, that mm -hmm. question and that answer that um, that's right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's a classic it is a classic yeah. you should all watch the um the blooper reel i guess is what we would call it for the dating yeah. game on youtube it's on there and it's a okay. winner yeah yeah so uh, we have a we have a duo topic this week uh doug which is always fun for us for our yeah. first topic and i'll let you kick that off but big news in our world yeah the big news is uh strike averted Potential oh. contract agreed upon. Shocker, right? It's uh, It's been pretty interesting. One of the things, well, there's two things on this one, Pete, that strikes my attention is number one, nobody knows what the terms are and, and uh, nobody's going to talk about it or share it until everything is ratified and uh, the troops have a chance to vote on it. So I think that's a little suspect, right? I mean, it could go either way. Is it more favorable to one party or the other? Yeah. Is it just uh, a mutual posturing? But it's interesting. There has to be some stuff leaked on it sooner or later because they said it could make, take months before it's it's ratified. So again, a little bit yeah. of positioning, holding back the cards in order to negotiate or play their position, even though they've technically negotiated the fact that they didn't say what it is, what the topics are, what they agreed upon, by nature says that uh, they can uh, manipulate the narrative to either side's uh, 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 ability, so that uh, that's interesting for sure. And then the other piece that that uh, popped in was, you know, it's for the whole uh, West Coast in in some degree, and then um, not just the uh, not just in LA. But yeah. I think the, the the bigger picture and my take on this one, Pete, is it just wasn't getting enough um, notoriety or press, right? They had a couple of work slowdowns. And nobody really paid attention. The volume and the in, the inbound for for peak season isn't quite there. We've seen that in the rates. 
And uh, the leverage is like, wait, there's not enough stuff coming in for us to pr uh, provide such a, uh, uh, a whammy to affect our position. We better come to terms, but let's not say what those terms are so we still have a little bit of leverage. But I think just the fact that POs, purchase orders for, the, for, for Q4 and the holiday season aren't what they are. There's a lot of uh, stuff from last year still in warehouses that they kind of realize that uh, nobody's going to pay attention to the song that they're singing to the level that they wanted to. So let's just wrap yeah. this thing up and uh, and go from there. So anyway, that's my take on it. I've had a really good time reading what what little limited detail has come out so far um, and all of it is rumors. You know, so there's the first big, big piece of it was that they were asking for a 100 percent pay increase. So they were they were asking for a 100 percent pay increase based on the amount of work that they did during the pandemic that I believe they lost 12 people died during the course of the covid pandemic. Now, they didn't say if it was from covid, mm -hmm. but still, you know, uh, while while the rest of the world was falling apart, the ports continued to operate. So they deserve some type of, uh, of comeuppance for that. That was the first. And then when you compare it to other recent union contracts that have been signed, the um, a, a lot of the increase were 34 percent, 38 percent, and how they broke it down over a year or two. There's a lot of speculation that they got a 50 percent pay increase. So I'll be very interested to see if that's exactly what happened and that it will come over a two year or three year period. And there's also this massive heroes bonus, which I'm sure you've read about. Mm -hmm. I think it was 70 million dollars that was going to be a one time payment. That was going to go to the entire union, and I don't know how they'll tear it out, but everyone's going to get a piece of that for working during during COVID. No information about automation, no information about how much they're going to give or get. It is it is a mystery, my friend. But um, but they came to some terms and took a lot of crap on LinkedIn last week, which is normal for me, Doug. Uh, yeah. I tend to say the things that people don't want to say, and I certainly did it this time, when um, I said everyone's complaining about how much money the longshoremen got out of the negotiation. And uh, well, first of all, you know, do you leave a lot of money on the table when you negotiate your compensation? Mm -hmm. And then second of all, I felt that we should be commending ownership and the union because we did not have a real strike. I mean, it was over a year, I think, about a year, right? Yeah. And we never had a strike. We had some we had some supposed alleged slowdowns. You know, there was some silliness that went on. But overall, they managed to make it through without causing some collapse of the supply chain, which I think we should give them credit for. Particularly, Doug, as you've mentioned before, we're looking down the barrel of a UPS strike. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. They were voting on it. I haven't read what came out of that vote, but apparently they're willing to strike. Yeah. That's going to really hit close to home. So, I mean, literally close to your home, everybody who's watching. Yeah. So I, it's just, uh, it's been fascinating to watch, Doug. Yeah, it, as, as it always is. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think the fact that it's uh, uh, under wraps, nobody knows what's going on. It'll, uh, it'll, it'll be interesting. But yeah, it's almost like reparations, right, for uh, time served during the pandemic, which is valid, right? I mean, yeah. if people just take a step back and say, Transportation in general, logistics, supply chain, you can't virtually ship a package. You can't virtually move a boat across the water, right? And right. so the fact that all of those modes, people um, uh, stayed in it, just like you and I did um, uh, during the pandemic, uh, it, it speaks volumes. So I I'm cool with it. I'm, I'm good with it. There's a lot of things that were done well. And uh, yeah, so give them some reparations, seventy million dollars worth, and we'll see. We'll see who's whose back pockets that ends up in. Yeah, well, not ours, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah some of the comments on LinkedIn, Doug, were just astonishing. Mm -hmm. People that I have a lot of respect for that just went after the Longshoremen's Union. I mean, I mean, as soon as the news was out, and they they were speculating, you know, what news? The news is that they've come to. Uh, an agreement on what to vote for and now the rank and file will vote on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're pretty sure they got a lot of money. Yes, this drug on longer than it needed to, but they're facing some some interesting threats about the addition of automation, just exactly how much 
more or less people are going to be engaged in the discharging and, and loading of vessels, how much auto automation is going to be put in there, autonomous vehicles, robotics, artificial intelligence, you know, all that. Over the next three to five years, that's going to have a significant impact on maritime mm -hmm. operations. So they wanted to get themselves in a position where they were going to be okay. And hopefully both sides walk away feeling a little bit irritated, but you know, that's, yeah. that's a sign of a good deal. Yeah. Well, since we tag team that one, we immediately go into halftime here and then we'll finish our other topics afterwards. And as everybody knows, the show is put together and, and supported by Cap Logistics. We joke Keenan wouldn't be here. He wouldn't be able to fill in and the show would not happen without their support. And we appreciate that. So caplogistics.com, uh, go check them out. So halftime, I, I like yours, Pete. So I'll let you rip with it. It's got a, um, I don't even know how to describe it, but let her rip. I like yours. We have been told by whistleblowers, and now it's multiple whistleblowers, who are all – this is why halftime can be fun because this has nothing to do with logistics. We, we have we've been told by multiple whistleblowers, some of them under oath, some of them who claim to have caches of evidence that the, that the world as a whole has been recovering UFOs. And not only that, but that the United States has recovered and maintains the custody of over 12 of them. Mm -hmm. And we're not all obsessed about this. Akeen and I talked a little bit about this, but I watch a lot of news and I listen to a lot of news. So when I'm in the car, when I'm working out, when I'm in the shower, I have I have some kind of data going streaming into my head. This is not the predominant conversation amongst mankind. So either we're just like, yeah, well, of course we do. You know, it's like Nixon was a scumbag. Oh, really? Yeah, I, yeah, of course he was. Like, this should be a shock to no one. Or we're just so inundated with other types of information that this just doesn't seem to. I've spent my whole life hoping this was true. And I want to believe. And now we have evidence and there's you know, all kinds of cover up information that's being you know, alleged. And how is this not the single largest topic that everyone is talking about? No, nope. mm -hmm. no, we're talking about presidents and former presidents and, and reality stars and how much this one's getting paid to leave Twitch. And I mean, this is news. That is not news. If we can know for certain that man is not alone. And that we have alien technology sitting in a hangar someplace. Well, I think we probably want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, Doug. It just it eludes me how this has not become the most important topic on the planet. Yeah. Well, I heard somebody uh, when I was in Fresno. I don't know last week or the week before. Um, yeah, there people were saying that interviewed on uh, I think it was Fox News that said if this is true, this is literally the biggest headline in the history of the world. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe a little over dramatic, but there is some truth in that comment. My whole take on it is, all right, whistleblower, why don't you drop something like give us something tangible. Right. If there is something there, you can put your hands yeah. on, you know, open the gate and let us see it. Right. So I, I'm I don't know. And, and then the other piece is it just kind of gets swept under the rug. It was kind of like the shiny object for about three days and then it just kind of went away. So would people say that's. Uh, Put on your tinfoil hat and say it's a cover up. And it, and, hey, uh, I will. Conspiracies. I'll buy us both tinfoil hats, Doug. You know, when, when you when you when you answer my questions like this, you know, when you take this, when you take the spoiler angle on everything fun and exciting, <laughs> I just want to ask you, like, you know, at what point did joy die for you, Doug? Like, at what yeah. point did did excitement and happiness and wonder die for Doug? You know, mm -hmm. how, how are you the most pragmatic human being on planet Earth? You're like, I mean, it's interesting and all, but prove yeah. it to me. I don't you know? know. I guess when, I as, as you get older, it's just part of the get off my yard phase that We're I'm in. the same age, bro. And and I'll tell you, like, you you are the first person to be like, ah, I'm not excited about it. I got my lawn. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is to me, this is incredible. Everyone's talking about this mini sub right now, you know, and knowing enough about the maritime industry, I can tell you that, um, there are people in dire straits at sea every day that get absolutely no attention. I think it's because this, this captures the imagination. Mm -hmm. It's got all the different elements of it. How is that on endless rotation on the news? And this isn't, I'll tell you why, Doug, because of people like you. 
That's why. <laughs> yeah, no joy. No joy. Well, no joy. Saw, you know, there's all kinds of videos. I, I don't remember all the names of the people that are on there, but, um, you know, unregulated, we're, we're pivoting here, but unregulated, there's a picture or a 30-second video about the, the uh, founder and the CEO. He reaches behind him and literally pushes like, oh, this thing has one button and it turns green. And then he pulls up a joystick, you know, and he says, this is how we operate it. I mean, it's just, I don't, it's like, I, I can't understand oh, yeah. it. It's crazy. Yeah. a horrible situation for sure. Absolutely horrible. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's the shiny object for the week. I, I've been on a lot of real hunks of crap on the water. Everything from cargo ships to just like, you know, you and your buddy are going to go sailing. And if you stop to think about how this boat is held together, basically with hope, you know, you would never be out on that sailboat. But but he, here are these people like, oh, it's a billion dollars. You made this square like in a garage someplace, like you and a bunch of your buddies. <laughs> ah, sure. <laughs> Let's go to the bottom of the ocean and I'll, I'll pack a lunch. What do you say? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty... I'm pretty adventurous. I like to think I would love to go to space. I've done some crazy things, man. You couldn't, I don't think, I, no, no. I, you could tell me that the aliens are down in the Titanic. Doug. I'm not getting in that thing. Yeah. You know what? That's where we use drones. I think you and I can finally agree on something. Is this is a place mm. where drones would have made more as sense. As long as it's not delivering packages down there, I guess I can buy into that a little bit. How mad so, are you going to be when it turns out that, that alien societies have been delivering things through drones and automation for <laughs> centuries? And you're just like, oh, you're going to get so angry. I can't um, wait. Nice. All uh, right. Well, hey, my halftime, um, we can give a shout out uh, to our good friend, Mr. Uh, Mark Saxelby, who uh, brought this to my attention about a week ago. It just finished up. It was this past Monday and Tuesday. You and I are doing the show on a Wednesday this week, but it's, it was referred to as the mushroom summit and the psychedelics of science. Oh, so yeah. basically uh, a two day trade show for lack of a better term here in Denver, um, that talks about psilocybin. That's the right way to pronounce it. Psilocybin. Doug. Psilocybin. What'd I say? Psilocybin. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't know. Psilocybin. That's how, uh, much I'm engaged with this, uh, MDMH, MDMA, all these different things. 9,000 people. <laughs> Nine thousand people. I, well, I know. I'm. I'm surprised it's not more. But you're just over there, like and they're talking about the psilocybin and the DMMDMDHA. We're so going to change the name of the show to Two Old Men Talking About Nothing." That's what yeah. we're changing the, the name to. Yeah, and we'll just have to uh, make sure we're in a balcony yelling at people down on a stage. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, it was. Uh, it, it it reminded me back to the 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 uh, the weed industry. So. It is legal in Denver, right, uh, for medical purposes, one of like two places in the country um, that, that it is uh, legal for, for medical usage. But it, it reminded me back when weed became legal in, in Colorado and the amount of people and business opportunities that flooded to Colorado. And people like you and I on the onset could get into it. And then it became com uh, commercialized. And big money came into it. And I think you and I have spoken at some other halftime that um, on, unless you're uh, well capitalized and have uh, a business acumen, the opportunity to make money in the weed industry is completely gone. You made mention of that, I think, uh, two weeks ago on the halftime. The, the difference with this one is that um, that is the roadmap that was developed. And so now Yahoo's like you and I trying to come in and make a quick buck on this is non-existent. It, it's already corporate. It's already money in there. And, um, you know, it's just like uh, um, commercial real estate development, right? You and I buying a house to flip and make 50 grand doesn't exist anymore. You have to be a big corporation that comes in and buys a block of houses uh, to turn it into condos. So, um, it sounds cool, but as far as the commercial aspect and people making money on this, it's already been commercialized and we've missed the boat. Um, but you know what? It's um, it, it's interesting. The one piece that this headline said, what it, it was the largest gathering in history uh, of this type of of, uh, of gathering, and I'm like, you know what? I think the largest gathering was the uh, Grateful Dead show that was at the Golden Gate. <laughs> park back in 1994 there was more than 9,000 people there oh, yeah. and trust me uh they were playing around with their mushrooms and psychedelics so i will yeah. challenge that comment on that news article and say 
really the largest gathering in history is the Grateful Dead concert back in 1994. Yeah, I've been to some Dead shows where I'm pretty sure that everyone, um, including the band and the cops, were all in mushrooms. Yeah. So uh, I don't disagree here. This this has ever since Mark sent it to us, and Mark loves when we talk about the show. Mark, 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 Mark. <laughs> Everything he sent this to us. I um, unfortunately I opened it, and now Google sends me crap about it all the time, and it's on my Twitter all the time. So there's pieces of it that I love, like Aaron Rodgers is speaking at it. Yes, yeah. A- Aaron Rodgers is coming to talk about mushrooms. Like the NFL doesn't have a problem with that. Um, yeah. You know, all these other people are are coming to talk about the uh, psychological positive, alleged positive psychological effects of taking psilocybin. And there's there's two two things I wanted to make sure I mentioned, Doug. The first yeah. is what what I just said, the pharmaceutical effects of psilocybin. This it's only a matter of time before the federal government says this is too dangerous. We can't have just, you know, Pete and his buddies in their Hawaiian shirts, you know, growing mushrooms in their backyard. We have to find a way because this is so the mind is so delicate. Federal government's going to be the only people that can sell this stuff, and it's going to come in a pill, and it's not, or it's not going to be in mushrooms, and, and that is going to cause riding in the streets amongst hippies. And then the second thing about this that drives me crazy is weed, marijuana, cannabis, whatever you want to call it, in its current modern form, is so incredibly strong. It's so cultivated. There's an entire agri-science business that's been developed behind it that is incredibly high technology. The the supply chains that are associated with it, all of the inputs that go into making it very, very well. It is difficult to compete at scale with people who want to sell you great weed. Not just great weed, like outrageously strong weed. You and I could start growing mushrooms in my backyard now. Mm -hmm. It, It requires... No high-end genetic science. It requires no real cultivation skills. Um, and people have been doing it, at least since I've been alive, you know, in cow pastures. It's it's something that is not difficult to do for yourself. And one of the big reasons when we talked about the weed industry, and particularly its fall down, where supply chain was such a promoter of it, probably five, ten years ago, is that, um, you know, in, in this particular instance, there is no supply chain. Yeah. There is none. It's just like growing mushrooms at the grocery store. So I'm I'm looking I'm looking forward to fully understanding how corporations are going to turn this into something that we just can't compete with, and it's only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. And I think their demographic and their target uh, market is smaller than uh, than in the weed industry was. So it'll be interesting. Be well, curious. You know, the, the last thing I'll say about this before we move on, Doug, because this this topic. Uh, I have someone very dear to me who went through ketamine treatments for um, for depression, and it was uh, it was like a light switch turned on, the complete change and the positive change of their personality. And that's mm-hmm. not something I'm recommending for people. I'm just saying that I've I've witnessed the use of psychedelics to help people with with um, you know dealing with their own mental trauma, and whether it's people coming back from war whether it's people that have gone through intense physical and sexual trauma, it's been shown to be very effective in helping people to reconnect that pathway and to find some sort of positiveness. And mm-hmm. um, I just imagine Keenan right now is, you know, sitting in the Lotus position in a loincloth listening to us like, Oh, these old men don't even know what they're talking about, man. You know, oh. I, 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 I meditate and I can probably get more than any of these idiots would get with all their drugs. You know, and he's just sitting there, Chewing granola, listening to fish records. Yeah. Just, right, well, nice. Anyway, anyway, Doug, that's it for halftime. Um, and this show is always brought to you by our good friends at Cap Logistics. To learn more about them and their solutions, check them out at caplogistics.com. Yeah. All right, Doug, next, uh, next topic. Yeah, well, this one's uh, going to ruffle some feathers. After all the, the hype and the craziness of chat, GPT, and um, generative AI, I've come to the conclusion that we're still a long ways out, right? And people like you and I, who were writing press releases or blog posts on LinkedIn, Mm -hmm. I certainly have done it, where you go on there and you type in a prompt and it gives you some pretty knowledgeable stuff, right? But um, I liken it to whenever this, um, I don't know how many years ago, it was a fart app that came out. 
that was absolutely <laughs> hilarious and funny. <laughs> and my kids and I played with it, and it was the best oh, thing ever. Oh, it's this new thing, and people are getting hyped on it. And here's, you know, here's here's the two things, Pete. So it's getting a lot of attention. There is application, um, but for our industry, I think it's a it, it's a ways out be, because of two things. One, it's based on set dates of information, right? The world moves very fast, and to ask um, generative AI what happened yesterday and how they should or how we should move or pivot based on uh, the here and the now, it doesn't exist. Will it exist several years out? Yes, I'm sure it will. Will it happen faster than I'm talking about it? Possibly, right? But um, everything is based on facts, not what's happening now, right? So it's almost like a modern day version of an encyclopedia, right? This is my opinion. Uh, and a lot of it's not 100% accurate. I think if you've gone through there and there's plenty of examples of Hey, I asked it this question and it wasn't 100% a accurate or it embellished on something. Um, so those are the two things that I think are really going to hinder it. And specific to our industry, Pete, I was thinking about this. So if you have a routing right now and your client says, I have to get this, what's the fastest way to get it from Shanghai to Denver, Colorado? Well, Generative AI will tell you what the best routing is supposed to be, but it may not take into consideration all the factors that are happening right now, weather, uh, the potential port strike, what's going on in the rail, um, what's what's changed with uh, like hours of service and things of that nature, uh, things that are in the moment. So the routing may tell you the best one that you could read about in a book or an encyclopedia, but it doesn't take into consideration what's happening in the last. 48 hours or what could potentially happen in the next two weeks that would uh, limit its ability to provide good data for you to make mm -hmm. the right decisions. Now, a book related to tariffs where you need to classify uh, a commodity, yeah, those don't change very often. They're pretty static. You can plug it into a formula and it spits something out. So I think there's application there. But for, for uh, improved routing and things that need information that's happening right here and now, it's still a ways out. So I'm going to equate it a little bit to the fart app that I had a lot of fun with maybe three years ago, but let's just calm down, hold our horses and let this thing evolve in our industry. So I'm trying to decide how to respond to this without sounding like <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Well, I, no, no, I, I don't necessarily disagree with everything you said. Doug. Uh, there are parts of it. I do. I do deeply agree with. So the first being that, Artificial intelligence, particularly ChatGPT, what it mostly does is gather existing information and it tries very hard in its current state to, you know, squeeze it as hard as it can, gather the data that comes out of it, and then use what's useful in a way that's easily consumable. And when you look at the way that it's being applied, if you if you haven't used, I think it's Orbits or Expedia, one of them you can actually use ChatGPT to help you figure out, and I've done it, and it, it, was, it was a very different experience from many of the chat bots that I'd used in the past. It, it, it flowed in a way, and it, 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 it was much more intuitive. It's just because it has access to more information. But I've also seen people ask ChatGPT to write, to write down a couple of paragraphs about a very complicated trade process. And it was woefully inadequate in what came out of it because mm -hmm. it's just not quite there yet. So um, I, I see on the surface exactly what you're saying. So I don't want this to come out as you're wrong. You know, I'm not doing that here. Yeah. But the way, no, there's no but. There's no but. Um, someone who whose opinion about this, I, I you know, he's it's, it's, it's an artificial intelligence software engineer. Um, the way he it's described to me was, what was the first hammer, Pete? And I said that, I don't know, probably. A rock, he said. Well, it was probably the human fist. So when you had to, you know, break something in two, you were using your body, and then some caveman figured out you could take a rock and you could break things with a rock. I said, okay, where's this going? He goes, just stick with me, okay. And then you go from a rock to uh, a hammer that's used to break people's skulls to the hammer that we we build houses with to the hammer that turns into a nail gun. He says we're looking somewhere between the rock and the first, you know bronze hammer right now. What we see 
because we're consumers of artificial intelligence and not artificial intelligence scientists, we're seeing what's what's out there. We're seeing what's being used. We're seeing what we can understand. Yeah. And what artificial intelligence and things like ChatGPT can do is so far beyond our understanding, Doug, that that it, it's the, the changes that will happen over the course of the next few decades, let alone a century. That's where you know the joy of all this will, will come out. I can remember my grandfather saying, "The internet is stupid." I'll just read a paper. <laughs> and that's kind of how I feel when when I begin to get a little bit more of a curmudgeon about this technology. So I just mm-hmm. have to remember that one turns into the other. Yeah. Well, release the UFOs, and and I think we'll be on a better playing field there. So, where do you think they got the technology, Doug? Yeah. Yes. All right. Exactly. So, um, I know you're on a tight schedule, buddy. So my yeah, last it. my last topic here is. Um, you know, Blinken, our secretary, went over to China, had a great, apparently very productive number of meetings over there. And they focused on a lot of things, not the least of which was the use of artificial intelligence and what we're just talking about and automation and, and uh, machine, engineering, uh, machine learning with regards to um, warfare. And the United States very much wants to not put any rules on that. The rest of the world wants very much for us to put rules on that because we lead the world in all of it. So they're very worried about us creating, you know, robot armies like in Star Wars Episode One, I guess. I don't know. So um, lots of fear there. But a lot of good talks about everything from our stance on Taiwan, what we're going to do with the economy, where we see trade going with these two countries. It, it was a very productive, open dialogue where we collaborated on a lot of big global issues. You can already see the world sort of sighing a little bit of a relief, you know, because ultimately what the world wants is China and the United States to find some degree of cooperation. There's a small group of hardliners in Beijing um, who really want to see conflict to the point of a hot war with the United States. But overall, it's the very, very powerfully wealthy members of the party who are becoming billionaires and don't want to see that end. So it's just like the mob, buddy. You know, war is bad for business. Um, you stay on your side of the street. I'll stay on mine. Don't run my numbers. I won't run your numbers. What this meeting last week showed was is that when the two most powerful mob bosses have a sit down, what normally comes out is peace. What normally comes out is peace. And there's no issue, apparently not even Taiwan, that we're not willing to stand down on if it's going to mean more economic prosperity for both countries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, my take on this whole thing is it's like mixed signals. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like whenever you are separate, when, when you are on um, an app, you can get pretty aggressive and really express your mind because you're anonymous. You're behind uh, the curtain, so to speak, and you can get pretty bold. Uh, but when you sit face to face and you have the human interaction, things kind of uh, calm down a little bit. So, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's some mixed messages. It makes it confusing on what the real position is. Um, and I'm. Interested to see how is this conversation any different than the last three that made a lot of uh, noise, you know, like show me the transcript of the topics (laughs) that they covered and you could probably overlay them and it would be exactly the same. So um, it's a little bit of a press hustle, I think, from both sides, both sides, not just the U.S. Um, But it's it's confusing to say, well, does that mean we're friends, question mark, or uh, do we still need to have a hard line on things? So. The mixed messages yeah. is kind of confusing, and I think it's more dialogue of the same thing that we, that has been uh, on the agenda item the last three instances this has happened. Good diplomacy takes time, Doug. You know, that's why you can't rush it. That's what people always tell me. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I listen to them. So, you know, ho- hopefully it will take time to, to get us there at some point. And I, and I, I do believe that we're, we're working toward that. Um, as far as, you know, what both sides want and the hardliners and all the rest of it. Um, You and I know many people in China. We always say this, you know, regular business people, we just want to make money. Mm -hmm. That's really all it comes down to. And I think, I think ultimately they'll find a way to, to find a way to make this work. And I, I still, I still really believe that people need to cooperate if we want to get this thing where it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. Good points. Good way to end the show. We've gone full circle on this show. If you just take a transcript of the, topics and the dartboard that we've thrown out there uh it's been it's been a good show so i want to thank all of our listeners for engaging with us we're a little off the handle a little bit we did not have a cast bonita update so i'll make sure that happens next week um 
But Pete, as always, I'm glad you could join us from your lawyer's house. I think there's more to that story than you're letting on. Oh, and yeah, we'd be, we'd be, we're <laughs> suing people, Doug, just left and right, just throwing suits out all over the place. Yeah. That's right. So, but anyway, great episode. I really appreciate you uh, doing this every week with me, Pete. Um, and I thank our listeners for engaging. Comment, make some feedback. If you don't like what we have to say, let us know. Uh, we appreciate yeah. your feedback. Even keyboard warriors, you know, like Doug was talking about. Um, Mark can tell you a funny story about that too, Doug, when somebody who had been talking a lot of smack to me on LinkedIn had to meet me face to face at Denver World Trade Day. And they were not ready for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. Keyboard warriors. Uh, anyway, Cap Logistics, thank you for this platform. We always appreciate it. And I think that's it. We'll wrap this one up, Pete. Have a great week, okay? You too, buddy. See ya. All right. Take care, guys. <laughs>